1956, the Commonwealth Film Unit produced Paper Run, a 10-minute film showcasing the main avail to Bugola area through the prism of Newport News agent Don Tweedy's newspaper delivery run. In it, there is a brief scene showing Bugola Beach and Allen Avenue. Though Mrs. Harris was no doubt a fiction, and the people occupying number nine merely actors, the floor level of the patio and the beach immediately behind it were real. Note how the patio floor level is higher than the 1956 June, and the boundary is marked with a low wall about 200 millimetres high. Eighteen years later, in May 1974, a massive storm pounded the New South Wales coastline for several days with enormous eight metre waves. At Bilgola, much of the beach was washed away with two houses at the northern end of the beach collapsing into the sea. That storm is estimated to have been a one in 50 year event. Today, in 2011, Bilgola Beach is more than fully recovered with the high dunes sitting well above the 1956 patio level as shown here. In fact, the boundary wall is now about 600 millimetres high and the dune is level with it, so the dune today is about half a metre higher than in 1956. This buffer of sand is Bulgola's best defence against future storm surges. The stability of this sand is substantially dependent on the vegetation that grows upon it. Some of the plant species now present arrive naturally, some would have been planted as dune stabilisers. The weeds have also crept in, many from nearby gardens, and they are spreading across the dune. Left unattended, it's likely that the shape of the beach will be significantly altered by these weeds. The native plant that grows closest to the sea is Spinifex sericeus, a grass. It's the primary coloniser that commences the process of dune stabilisation. It has long creeping stems that grow rapidly seawards to bide the sand and it produces large spidery seed heads that fall on maturity to roll long distances before the wind. This is a very desirable plant for your beach. Scavola calendulacea is another primary coloniser, but whereas spinifex is a grass, scavola is a fleshy plant that can form a dense carpet. Its flowers are a distinctive blue. Both spinifex and scavola are very important in holding on to what remains of a beach when it is severely scarped by storm waves, as was the case at Mona Vale in July 2011. Because spinifex and scavola have long stems that extend seawards, they can be undermined for a considerable distance, but still survive because their roots are further up dune, as you can see here. Six days later you can see, in the foreground of this shot, a few stems of spinifex hanging down the scarp face, trying to take root. More striking is the manner in which the carpet of undermined and collapsed scavola hangs down to protect the face of the scarp. This is a most desirable plant to have on your beach. Back at Bulgola Beach we have an extensive mat of pig face covering much of the dune face. It's another primary coloniser, a succulent with handsome purple pink flowers and long trailing stems up to two metres long. Pig face grows on the front of sand dunes, acting as a stabiliser that helps to bind the sand. This allows more effective sand stabilisers like spinifex grass to take hold. Spinifex, Scavola and Pigface occupy the most dynamic and hostile zone on the beach. They're fast growing, with roots that bind the sand, stems that run over it to form mats, and leaves that can survive burial. Coastal wattle, a low shrub that sits just behind them a bit further up dune, slows the wind to a much greater degree, so coastal wattle captures greater quantities of sand, and this builds the dune higher. Succulents that are commonly cultivated in gardens can easily become naturalised weeds. Being highly tolerant of dry conditions and infertile soils, they do well on beaches, as is the case here with these agaves. This usually happens because they've been dumped as garden waste. Another succulent invading Bulgola beach is an aloe from southern Africa, Saponaria. 
It's spreading across the dune. African daisy has also become a weed here. Mirabush is native to New Zealand. Being hardy and salt tolerant, it was once commonly planted in coastal gardens. But mirabush spreads along coastal cliffs and it can also invade littoral rainforest of which there is a magnificent example behind Bulgola Beach. Mirabush is a weed that grows into a small tree as high as 8 metres. Rather than continuing the practice of cutting down branches that threaten the view, it would be better to entirely remove these bushes and replace them with suitable natives such as Coria or Myraporum. As for the infestations of aloe and agave, they are best dug out because their waxy leaves resist the penetration of herbicides. Because succulents remain capable of re-sprouting long after being dug up, they should be disposed of carefully. Don't dump succulents or grow them in gardens adjacent to native vegetation. To do so is simply contemptuous of the natural environment, not to mention the public space. Many of coastal Australia's worst plant invaders are from southern Africa. Gazania is one of them. Here it is a Bulgola in amongst the pig face. You can recognise it by the yellow flowers and, in the case of this particular variety, the lighter coloured foliage. Pretty, isn't it? But Gazania is doing great damage to coastal ecosystems in southeast Australia. Here it is at Motovale where it has displaced most native plant species so as to dominate the dune. A small clump of gazania will produce dozens of flowers. Each flower has perhaps a hundred seeds which fall around the perimeter, causing the clump to grow outwards to a large size. Gazania plants probably exude a chemical that inhibits the growth of competing plants. The onshore wind, instead of moving up and over the typically smooth profile presented by native vegetation, instead accelerates between the clumps of gazania, and this erodes the sand between them. The result is a dunescape of gazania hummocks separated by blowouts and a negative feedback loop that replicates itself over and over. Gazania flowers should be removed so as to break the flowering cycle. The clumps should then be pulled out, have any sand shaken from the roots and upended. Exposure to sun and wind will kill them. Asparagus fern is a class 4 noxious weed in Pitwater. On Bulgola Beach there's a small patch that's relatively easy to deal with but if left unattended it could turn into something like this. Hundreds of pit water volunteers have worked for years to bring this weed under control. It produces prodigious quantities of red berries several times a year and each berry has several seeds. Of course birds eat the berries and spread the seeds. Wear gloves because of the small forms. Collect and bag any berries then cut back the foliage to reveal the location of the rhizome. Cut the rhizome out and bag it, leaving the roots in the ground. The water bladders are not reproductive. This is a bitu bush growing astonishingly in full view on Bulgola Beach. Bitu bush is the most significant environmental weed on the New South Wales coast, infesting 80% of its length. It forms large thickets that smother indigenous plants. Like azania, it changes the profile of the beach from smooth dune to one of hummocks and blowouts. You can tell this plant is bitter because the flower has between 11 and 13 petals, in this case 12. A single bitu bush can grow to 3 metres in height, stretch 6 to 10 metres across and produce up to 50,000 seeds a year. This bush, still a baby, has been on Bulgola for a year or so and has been buried by blown sand making it too difficult to dig out now. It needs to be treated with glyphosate herbicide. Each stem should be cut off just above sand level and the herbicide applied to the cup within 15 seconds. Seedlings can be pulled out by hand, but be sure to get the entire taproot. It's quite possible that left unattended, this plant could end up occupying much of the beach. If you doubt this, then take a walk along Long Reef Peninsula. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been spent here trying to eradicate bitu bush, but the job is nowhere near done. Right now, there's an outbreak of bitu on Bulgola's southern headland, towards Newport. It's also in Atunga Road. It is, likely as not, also on the northern headland. You must deal with this threat. There simply is no choice if you value your beach. Cheerful the flowers may be, but African daisy is a weed on beaches. It climbs through the coastal wattle, and when the flowers die, the seeds take root, waiting until there's a break in the canopy. Now coastal wattle only lives for about five years 
and when it dies it leaves a patch of bare sand. That's when the weeds take hold. You can see several dead patches in the upper half of this picture. If there's already a bank of daisy seedlings, then they'll soon dominate the vacant space. African daisy also targets the niche occupied by Scavola. Your beach won't be saved by African daisy, but it may well be by Scavola and coastal wattle. So there's no contest here. Get rid of the daisy. Bag any flowers and buds to be tied off and placed in the garbage. Then find the base of the plant, pull it out and upend it. Leave it sitting high on the surrounding vegetation because if left in contact with the ground, it's likely to take root again, especially if it rains. This ensures that the sun and wind will dry it out, and in a week or so, it will have vanished. But there are two weeds here that were brought in by the ocean. American Sea Rocket reached Australia on the sealing and whaling ships that operated in Bass Strait during the 1800s. It was first collected in New South Wales at Manly in 1870, and it now occurs all along the New South Wales coast. Almost identical, European Sea Rocket, which you see here, was first collected in Australia in 1897 near Perth. It's now common along the southern beaches of New South Wales and has reached north of Foster. Sea rocket produces fleshy fruit that drop off and get blown either inland to take root in the dune or into the sea to spread to other beaches. We don't know enough about this plant at present. It's good at holding sand but it looks to have weed potential. Sea spurge originates from Europe it was probably introduced to Australia in ships ballast water about 70 years ago, first appearing in Western Australia. Now it's found throughout southeastern Australia, including Tasmania and the islands of Bass Strait. In the past 20 years, it has colonised beaches along the New South Wales south coast and is progressively working its way north. A single sea spurge can produce 5,000 salt tolerant seas that will survive for years in seawater. Once established, a sea spurge colony can spread rapidly, displacing the native vegetation and changing the structure of the beach. Sea spurge has caused major environmental problems in Tasmania and Victoria. It's very easy to remove by hand, but make sure you remove the entire taproot. Plants can be simply left on the beach to decompose. Being a euphorbia, the broken stems of sea spurge ooze a toxic milky sap it's probably wise to wear gloves when dealing with this plant and to wash your hands after handling it. Be very careful not to get the sap in your eyes because it causes extreme pain, even in minute quantities. Residents and beach users need to learn how to recognise these weeds and deal with them, rather than expect someone else to do it for them. They could join the existing Bulgola Bushcare Group and expand its activities to include the beach. It meets at the end of Allen Avenue on the second Friday of every month from 8 to 11 a.m. The council has some terrific people in this natural resources division. They will assist you with tools and a professional supervisor who can educate you in these matters, show you essential techniques and greatly expand your knowledge of plants. Not far away, at Motorvale Basin, residents seem to care little for their piece of paradise. Lack of care, and probably ignorance, has resulted in an unattractive dunescape infested with foreign weeds. These weeds have hummocked the dune and steepened its profile. Left untended, Bilgola could end up like this. This is surely one of the wealthiest areas in the entire nation. Yet money can't really buy what's required here. Some tender loving care. This is a beautiful place. If you live or own property here, you are privileged. But with that privilege goes a responsibility to care for, rather than pollute, what lies just beyond your front boundary. To do so is also in your best interests.